Hi, this is Dr. Mahmoud Alade again with Lean Six Sigma. Uh, in this video, I will be talking about uh, more specific details about the phases of the DMAC uh, uh, process or methodology. Uh, before we do that, let's talk about the previous videos. We, in the previous video, we talked about what is the Lean Six Sigma, and we saw it this is a combination between two techniques, the lean and six sigma. And lean is a process uh, removal for waste. Uh, it's a, it's a, pro a process improvement to remove waste. A six sigma is reduce a variation and reduce defects. We combine these together to give us a better uh, methodology to even increase the impact of a process improvement. And we did talk about also about the pioneers for uh, six for the quality actually in general. We did we did talk about the uh, dimming cycle. We talked about the Ishikawa uh, and the contribution for Ishikawa. We talked about Togoshi and the design of experiments and the loose function. Uh, also, we did talk about the objectives of Six Sigma, as it is a uh, data-driven, using statistics, and we talked about the different um, the different uh, approaches, the team approach, the comprehensive as well, how the Lean Six Sigma will contribute to uh, reduce variation, uh, which will result in reduction in defects and will uh, need a, a, a collaboration from all the levels. Starting from team, manage from the from the administrative, the executive managers, uh, master black belt and black belts, green belt, and the team who will be working on implementing uh, this. So this is just an overview of what we just uh, what we uh, we have, what we've covered so far in this uh, course. Uh, now I want to share with you, I promise you that there's a good chart uh, to show you what's the difference between the three sigma and the six sigma. Uh, so if you have this process, uh, and this is a, poly, a, a, bullet, a bullet dimensions, uh, bullet dimensions, you see the mean is the target. So this is the target. The specification, these are the tolerances. The lower specification on the right, these lines in here. Let's see if I could use... Uh, uh, pencil pen okay so these are the lower specification this the lower specification and this is the upper specification right here the mean is in the middle this is the target this is where we need all the process to be around the more variation the far away from the goal which will result into less customer satisfaction uh, now versus if you have a six sigma by the six sigma means that you could fit six standard deviation between the target, the mean, this is the target, and the upper specification, and as well, the lower specification limit, which is this line right here. Uh, so uh, the list variation will result into uh, list defects in your process. Uh, here's the, uh, the two charts will show you the difference between uh, what is the variation. What, what you see, look at the curve. The curve is more peak here on the six sigma. We need to all the data to be clustered around the target. This is the target. We need it to be clustered around the target. As long as you have a flat curve, that means that you will have a more defects and uh, more variation, which is not good for quality, not good for cost, and not good for customer satisfaction. Okay, so what is the methodology of the Six Sigma? The Six Sigma is called the uh, uh, The Six Sigma methodology consists of phases, five phases. These are the uh, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Or what we call the DMAC. The MAC methodology, it's the same thing as a Six Sigma. Uh, and what's the goal of the Six Sigma? Again, just a reminder, we need to achieve 3.4 defects per million opportunities. If you follow these uh, steps, you will uh, take you into uh, a logical a, logic, a logical way to solve problems. The structure of DMAC will encourage uh, uh, people, managers, organization to create, to, to think uh, in a creative way, not just only based on the traditional way. 
Uh, these are the five phases, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And in this uh, slide, it's summarize most of the activities that we will be talking about in these phases. For example, in the define phase, uh, as, a, as a Six Sigma uh, uh, certified, what you need to do, you need to review the project chart or what the objectives, the goals, who's involved, uh, resources you need, timeline, etc. Make sure to, to validate the problem. If, is that true? This, do we have this problem? Based on what? You need to review the data that you have. Validate voice of the customer. What exactly the customer wants. This is give you a background about the process. If you don't have the background, there's no way that you could improve the process. Validate the financial benefits. Are you sure if we implemented this, that would result in high benefits, will reduce cost? Validate a high level value statement, flow chart. Make sure that you, you have a correct flow chart. We had so many cases where we worked months on, on a Six Sigma project and eventually we figure out, oh, we're missing a step from the flow chart or from the high level of uh, value stream. So make sure to verify that you have uh, uh, an accurate flow, uh, uh, flow chart or an accurate uh, high level uh, value stream. Uh, do you have a communication plan? What is your communication plan? Create a communication plan if you don't have one. And then uh, select a team and go ahead and work on the second phase. The second phase is the measure. The measure, you have to uh, look into the value stream map, look deeper, understand and focus more all the process. Identify key input process and output matrices. You need to have something measurable. You can't just use your opinion and do it. You have to start measuring. You have to start collecting data. Identify. These are key measures in the process. We need to collect that. And, and once, you, uh, once you identify these key input, you have to develop a plan. Make sure that you have a plan where you're able to collect these data. Validate the measurements. So another mistake that we made, that we, we all make, that you have a really good define for the problem. You, are, you reviewed the project charter. You have a good team. You identify the value stream map. However, the measurement technique is not valid will result in a, in a wrong data. So validate the measurement system. Make sure that you have a correct and accurate measurement system. Collect the baseline. Once you collected the data, find out what's the upper specification limits, what the lower specification limits. And then determine the process capability. Are we capable? Are we capable to deliver the customer what they want? Okay, if not, why? And how we could achieve the customer, uh, the customer satisfaction? We need to, to, we need more customer, we need to satisfy the customer. Then move on to the third phase. The third phase is analyze, determine critical inputs, identify potential root causes. So you have the data, you've collected the data, and now what you need to do is look into the data, deep look and see, okay, where are the root causes of these problems? And start reducing these. And you could use the 80-20 rule or the Pareto chart in order to reduce, in order to focus on only 20% of these problems. And remember, these 20% will lead into 80% of process improvement. And prioritize the root causes. Which one you should start? And then you're done with this phase, move on to the next phase. In the improvement phase, you need to develop a solutions for, the, for these problems. If you have more than one solution, you have to select the best solution. Once you develop the best solution, imagine how the how the process will look like after the improvement. So create a future map, future value stream map that will help you to 
imagine the future of the process. Once you have the future map, develop and implement a pilot solution. Don't, don't uh, apply the solution on a wide base for your organization. Just select one department, for example, one product, one line, and say, okay, I'm going to do this improvement only for this one. Just as a pilot solution. And if you achieve the result that you think you will achieve based on the future map that you stated in the future map, then apply the solution for all the processes for all the lines. And then once you develop the full scale implementation plan, you're done with the improvement phase. You should go and move on to the control phase. In the control phase, what you need to do, you need to sustain. You need to sustain the project. You need to sustain the achievements. You've done a great job with your team. You don't want this improvement to lose this improvement in a sudden. You need to keep doing it, such as implementing mistake proofing techniques, develop SOPs training plan, identify opportunities to apply project lessons. What you've learned from this process. If you want to do it one more time, how would you do it even better? And then once you're done with a control phase and you implemented a sustaining process to sustain the improvement and to keep looking into continuous improvement, future continuous improvement, what you need to do, you need to look into uh, document that. And this is part of the control phase. Once you documented the process, you give the uh, manual or the transition monitoring to the owner. You send it back to the owner, say, okay, well, we did improve it. Here is your process that you are the owner for this process. And this will take us to the end of the Six Sigma. These are the Six Sigma phases that we should implement and we should look at it. And there are more details, slides that I want to share with you here for each of these phases. In this phase, the defined phase, you will see input tools and output. The input for the defined, for the defined phase is the need for Six Sigma project, executive management sponsorship, and core team identified. The tool for the first phase, you need to look into the organization hierarchy, high-level process map, high-level Pareto charts, idea generation, and categorization tools. As an output, once you know that you're done with this, you will have a project charter. You will have established some matrices. You have a clear problem statement. Rules and responsibilities are identified. The major phase, all the output from the previous phase will be an input. A tools to use in the measurement phase, you need to data collection tools. You need measurement scales, validation techniques, statistical distributions, data mining, run charts, detailed process map, and process charts, stakeholder charts or tools, process costs. As an output, you will have a well-defined process. You will have a baseline, lower specification limit and lower and upper specification limit, and the process capability. You have process parameters affecting critical to quality, or what we call CTQ, and cost of poor quality as identified in measurement systems. In the analyze phase, you will have a well-defined process, which is basically all the output from the previous phase. The tools that you could use to analyze, you could do a Shikawa diagram, failure mode and effect analysis, process capability study. As an output, you will have important causes of defects, what we call the cause of problems, 
special and common cause variation you will identify and you should have the defects per million opportunities and a six sigma level so you will identify at which six sigma level you are operating right now in the improve phase you will receive the output from the previous phase to be the input for this phase as a tool what you need to do you need to look into the roi solution design matrix design of experiments the goshi concept as well you need to look into the robustness concepts you may use the response surface methodology you may use the project planning and management tools and prototypes or what we call it the pilot solutions to be applied output you will have a cost benefit for different solution and you will select the best solution to implement and an implementation plan for the control phase you need these tools you need to sustain remember in this phase you need to sustain it so what you need to do you could use such as control plans statistical process control 5s kaizen kanban total productive maintenance measurement system reanalysis as an output what you will get implement the solutions revise measurement system control plan for sustaining benefits improved process capability and lessons learned after you done with a six sigma and before you send it to the owner you send the documentation to the owner of the process with that i'm going to end my video right here and we will be looking into another video on lean we need to talk about more details uh, about lean what is lean and why we should use it i'll see you in another video thank you